Today, I will be talking about our journey at, at, at Heidelberg Materials, uh, about how we, uh, <coughs> sorry, like how we uh, improved our operations and specifically uh, delivering uh, platforms for hosting applications and granting applications based on Kubernetes. Yeah? So I was already introduced to this, and yeah, our our company is. Uh, one of the world's largest material building uh, materials co companies, and uh, we, uh, we, as a, a software engineering department, we provide like the infrastructure for uh, running applications for uh, both customers and also for production. So uh, that's uh, our software engineering department goals, and uh, so the, for example, for. For, for uh, the production part, we like uh, help optimizing the processes, the costs, and so on. And for customers, we offer them like nice applications to order, to track their the deliveries, and so on. Yeah. So, I will be presenting four chapters today. The first one uh, that would be the challenges, and then what was our implementation, and uh, the tools that we chose in order to uh, make this happen, and then. Our, what, what we achieved, that would be the third one. And then I selected like one important uh, topic. There are s many of them that could have been like a uh, deep dive, but, but in this case, I chose like monitoring and logging for such specific implementation. Yeah? So let's start with the challenges. So our journey started like in, in five years ago, and we had, uh, we started with very few microservices. Uh, and with clusters created manually through the UI. So it was like small department by then. And then we uh, had to configure so many components. And also in order to do that, we had to write uh, documentation, extensive documentation in fact, and then we had to repeat that. And uh, we, we had like a hard time with auditing changes, what happened, and then to to understand why something went wrong or so. Also, doing changes through the UI across multiple clusters makes it hard to revert the changes very quickly, making more complexity, for example, for debugging. Then we had also uh, make, it may, it was very hard to uh, uh, make uh, operations on stateful uh, components like disks, storages, and so on. So we, yeah, it was like pretty hard to lose data and we don't want to have that, yeah. So, uh, and also having uh, the scalability in mind, this was very tough for us because you have to do that again and again and again. So doing manual things doesn't get any easier once you have like many clusters and you do things manually, so yeah. Uh, so. The impact was that our DevOps team was like a bottleneck everywhere. So delivering things like took so much time. And then uh, there was always the risk of once some disaster happened, hopefully this never happens, but yeah, in that case, it will take a long time to recover. Also, even like from fa some big failures also. Also, while making production deployments, there is always the risk of uh, uh, if, like because if you ma maintain many clusters, then there is always the risk, like statistically, to, to to have some troubles in production, and that's also with the human and the intervention. So yeah, and for sure, this all of this ends up with having like a long uh, time for delivering features and value. Yeah. So uh, the question here is why infrastructure as code and GitOps in this case? So fast. Uh, the automation was the very important to be to be able to scale, and we chose. Uh, so I assume everyone knows about infrastructure as code and GitOps, but in this case we kind of combined them to be able to deliver uh, ready platforms for hosting applications. And I will start with the tools. So and uh, for, for both infrastructure as code and GitOps. So I can end up explaining the solution that we implemented by the end of the day. So oops, for the infrastructure as code, we use Terraform with make files and then uh, with 
bash scripts and actually other kind of languages like Python, but yeah, that's the most important ones. And here we provision any kind of infrastructure, uh, sorry, infrastructure resources here, like for example, AKS itself, which is the Kubernetes uh, service. And then we have Azure DNS, storage accounts, subnets. So one important thing is we run everything within private networks. So there are a lot of security measures we had to take. And then we uh, use, for example, uh, NSG subnets and so on. So yeah, that's a lot of things to configure for each cluster. And um, what we also use Terraform for is to set up the main uh, applications or Argo CD applications, which are kind of the bridge between uh, the infrastructure as code and GitOps. So here <coughs> for, the Argo C for the GitOps part, we use Argo CD. And our source of truth is uh, GitLab in this case. We use JSON it for templating as templating language. Also, we use Helm for packaging applications. Uh, the main, uh, so that we have global applications, what we call global application as configuration, which are the things common for every cluster. So for example, cert manager logging itself, some basic ingress controller, common operator, global airbag setup, et cetera, and so on. And also we have platform specific applications. So platform for us is like a set of clusters, yeah, not one or like also including many environments and so on. So we use also CI CD for GitLab repositories. We do not do manual changes on cluster unless in the case of some kind of incident or so, but we try also to avoid that. <coughs> we have also implemented few operators and controllers in order to fill a few gaps there. And we mainly use the app of apps pattern in Argo CD. So that's the basic things for to, to, to understand. So now I can uh, show the, or like go through the diagram. Here we have, uh, I think, sorry, just, here we go. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, I'll stick with this. So. Uh, basically, this represents eventually one platform, uh, one platform, yeah, and then we can see that uh, the, the like the the blue boxes are basically the the clusters, and then each cluster has its own Argo CD, and the administration, what's called, is the global applications. Argo CD is like pulling things and um, uh, synchronizes independently, so which each cluster we have one Argo CD instance and that takes care of pulling the changes and applying them. One important note here is uh, it's not always like, so it can depend on the branches, for example. We have for development infrastructure we use, uh, so we don't, we, we use like development branches, for example, and then on production use master, so releasing uh, production uh, changes for the applications or globals also. We do it by merging the development branch into master. Yeah, so, uh, and that's for the application, uh, the cluster states. Yeah. Uh, so that's basically it for, we chose in this case, uh, Azure front door because it has the managed TLS and then we can, and it's global. So we also, uh, have regional clusters because we, uh, uh, our company is global. We are running uh, data centers and uh, cloud and services in uh, US, in, in, in America, in NAM, basically North America, in uh, Asia, uh, Australia, and also in Europe. So we have to have some kind of global routing. In this case, we chose front door. And uh, yeah, so that's basically it. And uh, I will walk you through the setup to deployment and the kind of a code walkthrough, yeah? Uh, let, I hope you're able to see. So this is how the code look like. I will go through it very quickly. So uh, just to mention that I put everything in one, uh, in one uh, repository for the sake of the demo, but each, uh, project or folder may be on its own repository. So we have some shared infrastructure, which contains the cluster registration, for example. We have also uh, 
some kind of common resources, analytics, or, or like storage accounts, even for the states for their next projects. We have also what we define as platforms. We have the modules, so created a couple of uh, Terraform modules in this case, and again, those can be uh, pushed into their own repositories and uh, package it as a Terraform module. And then each platform is a uh, it's like those are the modules are building blocks, and then we use them to define the platform itself. For example, now we have the logging platform, which I will describe it shortly, and the DevOps to host things, and then uh, to, to host applications. Sorry, and then yeah, another some other demo platform, for example. Uh, those the, uh, up, <coughs> sorry, the, those uh, modules, for example, or for each platform, we have the infrastructure. And then we have the GitOps part because we need to, uh, to have independent states where the first project is to apply to create the cluster. And then the second part is to install things on the cluster because we cannot have them in. Uh, it's possible, but it's not recommended. Yeah? Then uh, the GitOps part, in this case, sets up, as we can see here, the GitOps application uh, and the global application here. And we end up having uh, this uh, set, for example, I will show you the set of uh, uh, resources, some Azure DNS faults, databases, in this case also, a cluster itself, and more resources. So each platform can use the core blocks or modules and extend on top of that, like adding different other needed resources there. So this also is the DevOps uh, platform which is now for the demo around on one cluster, but we could theoretically have many of those. And then here for the logging, if you check like just main, this, those are the two main application installed. Again, the globals is uh, deployed in every single cluster. We have our common, uh, uh, common components, such as, uh, uh, sorry, the, like we have, for example, the uh, secret synchronization, we have some kind of secret replicator, we have the, the, the ingresses, cert manager, and so on. For the main application, is the, it, it depends on the platform by then. And then here, for instance, for the logging itself, we have the Thanos, we have uh, some exporters, open search for the logging, we have also uh, Prometheus, and so on. So that's the idea. and. We end up having, like, for example, uh, all kinds of applications. This is running on the DevOps platform where we host like the tools we pro offer to our developers to. We, we install like Weblate, I don't know, uh, Grafana itself, open search dashboards like this one, or dependency track, or more other solution that we host there. And uh, yeah, uh, part of uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. So basically. Uh, that was the, oops, I have to enable. Yeah, okay. So just now to share a few num numbers here, and then uh, we s oh, on the amount of time that we saved. So initially doing all of this manually, and we were like, uh, we had like few clusters, but in order to scale, we had to implement this kind of uh, automation. And then we were like, took us like, two to four sprints to set up everything from scratch to the top. And nowadays it takes us less than two days to set it up fully running. And uh, for example, the both clusters for the demo took me like two days, to, even with a lot of refactoring though, but yeah. And then in this case, uh, uh, so that saves us weeks to months in this case, and also creating new replicas because, again, for uh, latency reasons and for uh, regional reasons, and we had to create different replicas in different regions. And then that also took us like one sprint or two sprints to do the same again, following the documentation we would have used. And then also now it's very simple to, it's just new variables to set up, and then we will be able to. Uh, create new clusters. Also, this saved us a few times actually where we have for like either major maintenance or for cluster recreation due to some big failure from Microsoft or so, then uh, we had to be able to recreate the cluster very quickly. 
One important also thing we gain from this is that uh, we have a pretty good confidence making changes in kind of uh, like production and everything is tested. So when we make a deployment of production, we are very sure that everything will work as we tested it. Yeah? And that reduces obviously the issues within the four releases. And uh, just to mention here that we are also a small team of DevOps and a few and then we are maintaining now like seven product application and 17 teams where we support. And then uh, we are eight members actually with uh, uh, almost 20% of our time allocated to maintain the clusters. And now we have 28 eight clusters and actually more than 9,000 age resources to, to manage. And yeah, so it's very also important here that not only deploying, but it's very important to, when, when you use Terraform, to clean up resources and to avoid extra costs. So for example, removing a cluster and all its subnets or resources, that's very quick and easy. Yeah. Um, okay, so other improvements that we gained from here is the disaster recovery. So it's important to highlight here that we try as much as we can to keep the cluster stateless. It's not always the case, but yeah, in the majority we have databases managed by Azure and can be recovered. We have also other backup mechanisms for that, but we still like rely on uh, managed uh, databases. And in this case, also for the secrets, we also uh, rely on Azure services for that. But all the cluster resources, IPs, configurations, and everything related to that is described by code declaratively and new clusters can be created from scratch very quickly and either to replace existing one, except for sure the some very rare use cases where we have, for example, to restore disks on top of that. So for, uh, yeah, that was the last one, sorry. So also one uh, important thing that we gained from here is the, uh, the, the auditing. So each change is, is a commit in this case. So we do not change the cluster explicitly. We go and edit the code and then it's applied automatically, for example, and uh, through the CI uh, for the for the Terraform. For security reasons, still like apply that manually, but it, it's on process to be automated also. But from applications point of view, if every change is literally a commit, and that contains obviously all the information about the author, why the, we also how we use uh, Jira, for example, for referencing. So we have the reference, why this was even triggered and all that kind of information. And if something is wrong, we can easily correlate a bug start time with the change. So we know what changed there. And also for sure we can revert it since it's a comment. So it's very easy to revert the change. Uh, so for the CI CD also, this looks a bit complex, but it is in fact simple because uh, we have that uh, deployment job. So the deployment job take three parts. The first one is the microservice uh, metadata. So the developers do not need to, def to define the Helm charts or like from scratch, they only provide part of the, uh, the, 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 the surface template. And then the job will take also from its base image the uh, uh, templates we define also in uh, libsonet or gsonet language, in this case templating language, and then the deployment job would combine with deployment data, which is the third part, and then make simply a, a git commit and push it to the GitOps repository. So basically releasing something or making a change will be done by the CI and the CI do not interact again with any cluster or like fetching authorization or whatever is just pushing changes to another good repository and that one is pulled by Argo CD which generates manifests and apply them. Yeah? So JSON it by the way renders JSON but it's still also uh, compatible with Kubernetes. You can use either YAML or JSON and yeah in this case we use JSON. It, uh, it's not easily and like for, 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 uh, for easy to read but since it's apply to Kubernetes and you can get it as YAML after that. So yeah, we don't necessarily need to read it uh, manually. So uh, yeah, so this is uh, 
the deployment advantage. Then here also for deploying into multiple clusters. Again, we're running cross regions, cross, um, sometimes you have like high availability from the same region. Then in this case, once we deploy, doesn't matter the number of clusters we have. It could be 100, but they still like pull at the same time and apply the changes simultaneously. And that uh, makes sure that things are very uh, quickly applied. And the changes uh, of the Argo CD we use webhooks also. And in that case, once the git commit is done, it's very quickly propagated to the clusters. Uh, so that was a uh, part. And then I chose again the monitoring and logging part to uh, highlight this. So we had, uh, <coughs> we want, we, the, the, the monitoring and logging can become very expensive, especially with managed services like M Azure and Log Analytics and so. And in this case, we decided to host our own. So we use this platform concept to host a logging platform, yeah? And it's also monitoring itself. But yeah, uh, we use basically those tools. I also put Azure Monitor and Application Insights because we use those for sure to monitor the logging platform itself. That's the exception, yeah? So if that fails, we at least know that, yeah? And then uh, we use Thanos, Prometheus, Grafana for uh, the monitoring and then open source and open source dashboards. So it's basically open source solutions. And here the challenges, as I was saying, like to monitor many clusters and we didn't want to uh, uh, have to make like manual changes to register a cluster or once a new cluster is created, it gets aut registered automatically. So this is the concept. Basically, we have a key vault. I showed that in the code very briefly, but uh, we have uh, a key vault where we, every time you apply Terraform for a new cluster, it creates an, an, a secret, and that secret contains all clusters information like the host, the details about how to get to that cluster to uh, scrap data or to push data to. And then uh, once that cluster uh, secret is created, we have uh, the AKV2KAS and some custom operator. It's called uh, KV sync operators. And that actually propagates all the secrets into uh, the logging platform. And then they are transformed by another operator that we wrote which is called template resource operators, transforms those into a config. And once that config is created, it's being updated from Prometheus. So every new uh, cluster which is created gets automatically recognized by the tool. So if we would apply and go to Grafana, I will find it right away. So everything is basically uh, automatic from that side too. So we have uh, both logging and monitoring enabled for the whole for all the platforms by default. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that was it for me. Thank you. Any questions? Please. Uh, so you were using Terraform on Azure. Have you evaluated using the Azure YAML pipelines? Uh, no. Azure YAML pipelines for, for the infrastructure as code part? Or? Yes. So we uh, evaluated uh, ARM templates and uh, BCEPs, but no, but and for the so the inconvenient to that, generally speaking, is with our Terraform we do not deploy only Azure resources. So we also uh, deploy, for example, you know, for example, this Cube CTL provider, or and that's the, the the important part, especially here, because what we try to do, as uh, I was saying, like, the combination of both is that we uh, set up the infrastructure and then we establish that bridge, which is like inst installing the first components that will start syncing system and that was easily done by Terraform than any uh, other infrastructure as code dedicated to Azure itself. Uh, and maybe another, <laughs> basically, in this case, it's based on AKS, but if we adjust the module specifically for the KAS, then we could also use it on any other cloud provider too. It, it, we, yeah, we, had to be, we wanted to be consistent <laughs> in the Kubernetes spirit, like being cloud uh, agnostic at some extent.
please. Argo CD is installed as a Helm uh, with the Helm provider from the Amphra section. So the uh, modules, uh, we have the one, first one which is uh, used uh, like the building blocks. The first one is to install the Amphra section itself, so to create it, sorry. And then the second, which is the GitOps one, where we install not only uh, Argo CD, we install also uh, Kyverno for policies, the basics policies, because also Argo CD itself needs to comply with the policies we define. We have also the basic, uh, the core AKV to KS to synchronize secrets because Argo CD requires sensitive data to operate also. And then uh, Argo CD is again installed by Helm uh, provider from Terraform. Yeah. Uh, oh, I think here so. Sorry happening in a very organic way, which I like as well. Uh, but there's also the Slido app. If you go there, you just punch in that code, and in two seconds, you can uh, post your questions. And then it's also visible on YouTube and everywhere. So let me just, uh, yeah, let's go by. Uh, First one. Yeah, so how did you automate the Terraform code deployment? Did you run pipelines, or did you use a specific tool? Uh, so uh, we. We plan to use GitLab CI CD. We had proof of concepts and which were planned to run, but currently, and for security reasons, we st because we have the private uh, setup, we still have, uh, we, and we need like ensure a two factor authentication to, to, to apply things. We have, uh, we run those uh, manually specifically, yeah? but we have, we, we run uh, CI CD, GitLab CI CDs to. Uh, deploy them in the future. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, next one is uh, how do you render cluster specific manifests with Argo CD? Yes. So uh, one. Uh, so the GitOps module, which is deploying, or which is uh, which is uh, creating the two main applications, the global and the main one, the root, which starts the whole process, gets from uh, Terraform. A set of uh, in, in Helm that would be values, but we use JSON on it, and we it's called TLA top level arguments or external variables, and that provides the cluster the awareness about itself. So basically, it provides the host some sensitive information again to operate, and those uh, are propagated to sub applications, and in that case, any cluster or main applications, part of the templating language, you can define or use, for example, conditional uh, re manifests rendering or render specific resources on specific clusters and so on. So basically, the main applications gets uh, variables and use them to render or not some specific cluster or uh, manifests or some manifests with specific cluster information. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Fluentbit and Fluentd, uh, what is the reason behind using both? I think that's maybe some legacy stuff. Yeah, so basically we have Fluentbit, which is lightweight, and we, and we uh, and it's forwarding, so, so we have it on each uh, node, and that's forwarding to one Fluentd, which then push the rest for the uh, for, for, for open search, yeah. And, and, and I, so in, in this case, it's maybe like a, so on, on, sorry. So basically, Fluentd has the stateful part where it gathers basically the 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 the, 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 the piling the the logs and then try to send them again and again. I do not have uh, the exact reason why we didn't use only Fluent bit, but we did that uh, since the beginning, so I cannot answer this specifically, yeah? but just describe it what we have. Yeah? That, that's fair, I think. All right, uh, maybe an open tofu maintainer in the audience, so are you planning to move to open tofu? Have you guys considered? Not yet. It was uh, <laughs> discussions, but so since we do not like uh, 
like built on top of Terraform, but we use it as uh, a tool. So we don't necessarily have to. We still like use the as open source, but yeah, not consider it yet. Mm -hmm. How do you monitor configuration drift through manual changes? Uh, through manual changes. Uh, I, I, so maybe there somehow to clarify the question because obviously we don't do manual changes, yeah. But uh, the, with Terraform, we uh, there is the state which checks the drifts, but, and with Argo City, Argo City is capable of uh, seeing the differences unless explicitly defined to, to ignore. But it it is also so what that's very important, and in, in, in Argo City brings this uh, great feature where uh, it is capable of self-healing. So Kubernetes is capable, for example, to uh, create pod if it dies, or st if you still have the deployment, but Argo CD with self-healing capability, it can even uh, restore deployment itself. For example, if by mistake we remove a deployment, it will be back with the same configuration. For sure, if there is a stateful set and the disk is lost, that's another story. But f as far as you have like uh, stateless components, then it, everything will be back. So drifts, especially on production, we have that enabled always. So basically, any cha manual change will be reverted immediately. So you cannot literally do, unless you are admin and you disable that. Yeah. All right. Um, Argo CD app of apps pattern. Is it Helm charts or application sets? Uh, so, the uh, it depends on the application. So basically, the 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 f first. Uh, so we s had application sets. We tested them, but we referred it. But we have applications. The main one, at least, is installing other applications, but they are not necessarily Helm because if you if, again we use JSON, it it's very interesting language actually but it is capable of rendering the components immediately. So we have one app, which is, for example, taking one repository, and then Argo CD is capable of supporting shoes on it. It just renders it. So there we also use Helm application. For example, for Cert Manager, when we install it, we take the Helm app, and we include it in our uh, globals uh, as uh, Argo application. And that is installed as a Helm chart. Yeah. There, there are many uh, other ways of, of uh, defining an application by Argo CD. I think the fault, like, I don't have the exact name, but it's a generator. And it can be also based on folders, for example. Each folder is an uh, application. And that uh, is also uh, pretty interesting. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Argo CD is managing itself, or you update it through Terraform? Yes, we upgrade uh, Argo CD uh, from Terraform. So because it's installed by it, so we have to be uh, to not drift. Yeah? We get, we do not ignore that upgrade. So every time we uh, make uh, Argo CD upgrades, we do that through the Terraform and we apply. Mm. Yes, how do developers interact with uh, the system? Um, how do they create new resources? Uh, so, okay, the developers interact with the cluster. So, so uh, Argo CD main app, one of its job is also to set up the airbag control. So uh, every, uh, so once everything is synced, uh, the developers have access to the cluster with their specific roles. So they can, for example, depending on the environment, I said like it's rendered depending on the environment. Then for example, in development, they could theoretically see secrets on, on production, they can't and so on. So it's an example. But uh, so once you have access to the cluster, they use different tools. They can initially, it was not even the intent to provide the Argo CD UI because we use it just as a tool for syncing the, the state, but it was useful, so we 
keep it. We kept it and we still have it. But basically, the developers interacts with the cluster, with lands, with Azure portal, with any with with the command lines, with yeah any kind of tool, and to create resources on the development. They can do that with uh, any tool, but for production, they have to make that by code. So basically, they have to create that uh, to the through their microservice repositories and use our uh, CI that we provide in order to make the deployment, and that will uh, create the resources by the end of the day. All right, uh, quite many questions. I think yeah. that uh, we can consider a success. Uh, so thank you very much. I see that there are more clarification questions in Slido coming in. I think uh, you are going to be around in the hallway or, yes. or next to the uh, the stage. So uh, thank you very much, Khalid. Thank and, uh, you. Please give a hand to Khalid. <laughs> <laughs>